Hey everyone and welcome back to another vlog. If you don't know me, I'm Mark, the Diabetes Diet Guy. If you're watching on YouTube, head over to diabetesdietguy.com because we have a bunch of free information all about diabetes and healthy living that's designed to help you manage your conditions and live a healthier lifestyle. Now, this blog is off the back of a question I received, which is about why this particular individual was seeing high glucose levels upon waking. Because to their mind, they've eaten a healthy meal and then they've gone to bed and suddenly they've seen a dramatic rise in their glucose levels. Now, this is actually something that's pretty common in both type one and type two diabetes. This video is about type two diabetes. We will do a separate one on type one diabetes very shortly. So let's jump right into it. So there's a few different points we need to consider here. Now, the first thing to think about is what is driving up those glucose levels in the first place? And that is the underlying diabetes. So if you're seeing high glucose levels, particularly in the morning, then it shows us that actually there's probably a fair amount of progression of the disease because otherwise your glucose levels would be in normal ranges. So the higher the glucose levels, it means the body is struggling to cope to keep the glucose levels within those normal parameters. So it doesn't mean this is a lost cause, it's, it's always a good time to start now, but it does show if you haven't got the right medications in place, which keep in mind the medications they help, but they're only masking the problem, they're not a cure, they're masking the problem, masking the symptoms. Then it shows us that actually there's some work to do to get those glucose levels down. So it just take it almost as feedback. Glucose levels are high during upon waking or even during the day, if they're going high, then it shows us that the disease has progressed to a certain amount. If you're newly diagnosed, it might mean that the diabetes has been dormant or unnoticed for quite some time. And often we pick patients up in the hospital where their glucose levels are sky high, despite the fact they had no idea they had the disease. And we know that some people can live with type two diabetes for up to 10 years without knowing they had it. So obviously that's a lot of time for the glucose levels to start to increase and disease to progress before they've even known they've got a problem. So that's the first thing. But what is it actually that's pushing up the glucose levels? Well, there's a couple of different things. First thing to think about is the liver. And I've previously done a blog on the liver before, which I'll link at the end of this video. Now, what the liver does is it's kind of like your storage center for energy. So when you eat food, your body turns the carbohydrate containing food that you're eating into glucose. Now it's only gonna use up what it needs. So everything that it doesn't use up, it's gonna store for later, because it's clever like that. And it stores glucose as another substance called glycogen. So it's the same thing really, but glycogen is just a storage form of glucose. And it is stored in the liver primarily, a little bit in the muscles, a little bit in the kidneys. And when your body detects that it needs some extra glucose, it starts to release this glycogen from storage. So it tops up your glucose levels. So it just keeps you a nice steady stream of energy throughout the day. But that's in normal metabolism. In type two diabetes, we know that one of the main problems is weight gain and obesity. So too much fat sitting in and around those organs. So what happens is, is you end up with a fat layer around the liver. Now usually insulin comes to the liver and it tells the liver to turn off or slow down its release of glucose. So there's there, too much, we're just gonna dial that back a little bit. But of course, if there's a big fat layer around the liver, then the insulin can't really get to the liver to deliver its message. So the liver just kind of opens the floodgates and starts pouring glucose into the bloodstream. So what do you see? You start to see an increase of glucose levels particularly during periods when you wouldn't expect to see them, like overnight. So you can see that if you're having elevated levels in the morning, it's the liver releasing glucose into your body and the insulin not being able to have an effect to deal with that. Now you'd usually get probably an increased amount of glycogen being broken down anyway overnight because obviously you're not eating. So your, lip, your body detects that it needs more glucose in the bloodstream. So you would see an upregulation or an increase in the hormones that tell your liver to release, these, um, to release the glycogen. But in type two diabetes, because of this fatty liver, it can get out of control and then you see too high glucose levels in the morning. Another factor that can cause this is hormones. 
Now this is something we see very commonly in type 1 diabetes, but we'll save that for the other video on type 1 diabetes, but the same principle reigns true with type 2. Now when you're getting ready to get up, your body starts to release certain hormones to get you ready for the day. Things like cortisol and growth hormone. So these are kind of like your, um, not always stress hormones, but these are kind of your get going hormones. Now what those get going hormones do is they tell your body to start releasing energy and get ready. And glycogen's no different. So the liver starts to be told to release some glycogen for glucose to get you going and get you ready for the day. Now, as a result, we can see something, we start to see an effect where the glucose levels start to rise. Now, in usual metabolism without diabetes, your body then releases a little bit of insulin to just keep that thermometer dialed to where it likes it, that nice temperature, if you will. So it does, the glucose levels aren't too high and they're not too low. But of course, in type 2 diabetes, the insulin, due to insulin resistance, isn't working as well. It's still there, but its message isn't getting heard as well. So, hormones start to push up glucose levels, insulin is released, insulin isn't working as well, so the glucose levels keep rising. So you wake up, test your blood sugars, and see that you have hypoglycemia, so high glucose levels. You can't figure out why, so that's another reason. Last but not least, I just wanted to talk about the evening meal. Now usually I don't pay too much attention about the evening meal because there's such a long period between evening meal and waking up for most people that it shouldn't have a major effect on your glucose levels upon waking. It should have been digested, dealt with and done. But there is one, it's, um, one example of when this will have an impact and that is how high are your glucose levels after your evening meal when you go to bed. Because if you eat a meal and your glucose levels rise up to say 21, that's pretty high, then it's got a long way to come back down to get into a normal range for the morning. Keep in mind, you wouldn't usually see huge swings in your glucose levels. They're usually controlled between somewhere between four, maybe a little bit under, and probably as high as nine after a meal, and I'm talking quite quickly after a meal. Generally speaking, at the times that you'd be testing your glucose levels before meals, you're sort of averaging between four and below 7.8, okay? So quite a tight bandwidth. So let's say you had a meal and it's gone up to 21, you can see that's a long way to come back to a normal glucose level. So even if you went from 21 down to 11, when you test your glucose levels in the morning and they're 11, they're high, but it's because they started very high after the meal. This doesn't mean that the diabetes is better then because it brought your glucose levels back. It shows us that actually after a meal, there's potential for some serious spikes and it ties us back in with point one that shows us the progression of the diabetes has come on somewhat and actually either we need to medicate or start making some lifestyle changes pretty sharpish to address that problem. Now, if you prefer not to go down the medication route, which I know a lot of people don't want to do, then you can start to address this with getting active, eating healthier, losing weight. It goes a long way to helping address this. If you're not sure where to start, check out the blog. As I say, there's lots of information there, absolutely free. But if you really want a step-by-step -step guide and take the work out of it for you, I do offer a diabetes recovery program. There is a fee attached, 90 pounds, lifetime membership, but it shows you exactly what to do has showed you the foods that you can eat in abundance, the foods you need to portion control, the foods that you're best avoided or limited, and gives you lots of hints and tips, as well as plenty of education videos so you understand the disease, understand the process, and essentially helps you become the expert in managing your condition. So it's not just a mindless program that you follow, it's really about educating you to take control of your condition and ultimately get the best health outcomes long term. Okay, so we're gonna leave it there, guys. I hope that's cleared up the question. If you've got any more questions, drop a comment below, either on YouTube, Facebook, or drop me an email. Always happy to answer questions. Remember, if you need a helping hand, check out the blog and the program. And until then, until next time, I'll see you soon.